Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the HYPE conference. I would like to welcome you here on behalf of the European Commission. Many of you know me already because I was responsible for HYPEG in the past and I am happy now again to be the head of unit responsible for the HYPEG project and the HYPEG coordination and support action and in a sense for the HYPEG conference. Now I would like to introduce to you a bit of the ideas of the European Commission, a bit of our strategy along computing. So we see, we observe that along the compute continuum, we are witnessing a shift from centralized computing facilities to computing at the edge. So shift, a paradigm shift from centralized to the edge. And what does this mean for Europe? So I would like to discuss that a bit in more detail with you today. We see today that 80% of the processing and analysis of data takes place in data centers and centralized computing facilities and only 20% in smart connected objects. This ratio is expected to reverse over the next five years, inevitably leading to a paradigm shift in where data is processed. Edge computing, and to give, to give you a, a definition, edge computing refers to processing which takes place, uh, place closer to or even within an Internet of Things device itself. That is the edge or periphery of the network. So that is the shift we see. At the European Commission 2021 fireside chat on next generation IoT and edge computing, we had lot, a lot of experts there, and they agreed that edge computing is the logical evolution of the cloud computing model, avoiding the transfer of mission-critical data in the cloud supporting resilience, real-time operations, security, and privacy protection, and that is important while at the same time reducing energy consumption and carbon footprint. So that's the definition. What does it mean? It's expected, we expect that in the middle of this decade, most of the data processing and analytics will take place where they are most efficient. And that generally means that's close to where the data is generated, and that is at the edge of the network. European companies have strong expertise and market shares in, industri in industrial and business applications, industrial IoT, 5G, and that across many sectors, including mobility, energy, the home, agriculture, manufacturing, logistics, and there are many more. By capitalizing on these unique, largely sectoral competences and by driving leadership in the field of edge computing and the IoT, Europe has a one-time opportunity to regain a significant role in the computing market by 2025 and beyond. So leveraging a local distributing, distributed computing architecture, this move to the edge and the IoT facilitates the creation of new services and business models which are rooted in verticals around the applications rather than today's more general purpose cloud business model. The shift towards edge computing will lead to strong changes in the computing landscape and innovative use scenarios across our economy. Let me pick three of them, just the most important that I see. So high performance will come to the edge and in devices. So reinforcing current trends, high performance processing will not stay in large centers, in large HPC centers, but will become a commodity at the edge and in the IoT. A good example, and I think it's important to think of examples here, a good example comes from the mobility sector, which is increasingly electric, connected, autonomous, and servitized. With the share of electronics in the total cost of car rising, terms like software-defined vehicle, or some call it smartphone on wheels with additional security, they are emerging to define next generation intelligent vehicles. At the core of such new vehicles will be a few central computers, computer systems powered by high performance chips rather than the 50 or more electronic control units we see today. That's number one. Strong, the second one, strong computing capacity at device level in the emerging smart Internet of Things will enable new concepts, and I have in mind decentralized intelligence and swarm computing. Whereas in the past we programmed each device in the IoT individually, in future artificial intelligence enabled software engineering tools 
will support a functional approach or a holistic orchestration of swarms of homogeneous or even heterogeneous devices. Such concepts have a high potential, for example, in the energy sector. Another example coming, where we power the next generation of smart grids. So optimizing locally renewable energy supply and demand is the key issue here, by households, by buildings, and by electrical vehicle charging. That's example number two, where we see a shift. The third one is, we will see AI-based cognitive cloud frameworks in future, which integrate diverse computing and data environments seamlessly and securely across the computing continuum. This is spanning from HPC to core cloud to edge to device, so all the way through. They will support automatic management of the computing continuum, and they will cater for dynamic load balancing and optimized energy efficiency of the compute resources, but also of the data traffic. Again, a use case here. An interesting case where we see, where we see all levels of the compute continuum is the agricultural sector and their high precision farming. Here, we see real-time optimization of the dosage of water, fertilizer, or pesticides, which is done locally in the tractor or the farming equipment. Edge computing capacities at cooperative levels, the cooperatives, the agricultural cooperatives, provide analysis of local data from field sensors and machinery from neighboring farms. So it's going broader from your farm to neighboring farms. At the same time, higher level services offered by diverse, diverse platforms in the agricultural sector are mostly cloud-based. So we see all levels of the compute continuum. Now, it's a bit the vision. How is the EU supporting this paradigm shift? So the European Union is supporting the evolution of computing along several lines. And that are lines in terms of investment, but also in terms of legislation. So let me first come to the SHIPS Act. In February 22, the European Commission proposed a comprehensive set of measures to ensure the EU's security of supply, resilience, and technological leadership in semiconductor technologies and applications. And let me here refer to the first pillar, the first of three pillars, which is called the Ships for Europe initiative. It will pool resources from the EU, from the member states and associated countries, as well as the private sector. For that, the key digital technologies joint undertaking will be enhanced and reoriented to become the Ships joint undertaking. We envisage, for example, support for, and that's very close to what you do in HIPIC, for strengthening existing research development and innovation, for pilot lines for prototyping, and also for testing and experimentation of new devices for innovative real-life applications. A major target of the SHIPS Act is the next generation of computing ships, including for quantum computing. Second point on the legislative side, data legislation. With computing power moving closer to where the data is, data legislation has strong influence on the rules across the computing continuum. The European Commission is putting forward the legislative framework for a prospering data economy. And we have had several communications on that, which are now in the legislative process. For example, the last one, the Data Act, it will make more data available for use and will set up rules on who can use and access what data and for which purpose. I'm thinking, for example, of in-vehicle data or energy consumption data. It was proposed by the European Commission to Council and Parliament in March 2022. Now let me come to the next step, which is the data and cloud strategy. The European strategy for data aims at creating a single market for data that will ensure Europe's global competitiveness and data sovereignty. Common European data spaces will ensure that more data becomes available for use in the economy and in society. While, and that's important, keeping the companies and individuals who generate the data in control. So control is with the ones who generate the data. Through the digital program, the Commission is co-investing in the deployment of European data spaces 
for all kinds of sectors like mobility, manufacturing, energy, agriculture, health. And also we are investing in cloud to edge services, cloud federation and marketplaces. Last not least, and that's your daily business, are the research and innovation programs. In Horizon Europe, Europe is supporting research and innovation on computing technologies, I call it at large. So major initiatives that we have include, for example, under cluster four, digital industry space of Horizon Europe, more than a quarter of a billion euros, a quarter of a billion euros is planned to be spent between 21, 2021 and 2024 on a targeted research and innovation initiative on cloud edge IoT for European data. The initiative has started successfully with first research projects being launched on the next generation of meta operating systems for edge IoT, edge and IoT, on environments for decentralized and intelligence at the edge, and on cognitive cloud frameworks. This is, on, this is an ongoing initiative that we plan to continue in 2023 and 2024. Second area in the joint undertaking on key digital technologies to be expanded to be called CHIPS joint undertaking, the strategic research and innovation agenda for electronic components and systems dedicates a chapter to edge computing and, uh, and embedded artificial intelligence. Calls in KDT are normally conducted once a year based on joint, joint funding from the EU, from the participating states and from industry. So it's a three part, what we call three part right funding. The third one that I would like to mention here is the European High Performance Computing Joint Undertaking, EuroHPC, which is a joint initiative between the EU, European countries, and private partners to develop a world class supercomputing ecosystem in Europe. It aims at reaching exascale capabilities in Europe in the next two years. It supports the development and uptake of innovative and competitive supercomputing technologies and applications based on a supply chain that will reduce Europe's dependency on foreign technologies, on foreign computing technologies. Specific emphasis here will be given to greener and more efficient HPC technologies. In many areas across the digital and the Horizon Europe program, applications that capitalize on advances in computing are supported. So these include applications in the manufacturing sector and the energy in, in the energy intensive industry sectors, in the mobility and in the energy sector at itself, and also in the agriculture and food sector. So you will see many applications there using these new computing technologies. So that gives you a bit of an overview of what the, what the Commission is supporting on the investment and on the legislative side. In developing these research programs, the European Commission draws upon resources in our constituency, and in particular here in this field, on the HIPIC vision. The HIPIC vision provides an excellent complement for us to the strategic research agendas of European industrial associations by looking a bit further than normally the in industry is doing. It is therefore heartening to see the return of this event again to be physical, to be in person. So the most important European networking event, as I see it, for the academic and industrial research and innovation uh, community in computing systems in Europe. So I wish you a successful conference, and I hope that I will be here in person again next year. Thank you very much.